This download is the only extract the BBC has of this edition of Desert Island Discs. The presenter was Roy Plumley. I'm a very good listener. Uh, uh, from an early age, I was a devotee of uh, symphonic music. Uh, uh, you know, the Albert Hall on Sunday, yes. and the Queen's Hall, and so forth. You know, I'm a Londoner, and uh, I was uh, quite uh, a devotee of the theatre at a mm. very early age, a first nighter, I think, probably at the age of 16 or 17, maybe earlier. Were films an ambition from your school days, or, or like most of us, did you just happen to get into the job you like? Um, I would say that, um, uh, apart from being a devotee of the theatre and the concert, of course, films also had an important part in one's uh, amusements. Yes. Uh, but uh, my interest became a little more deep beyond, shall we say, the fan magazine stage. Uh, I think my reading at that time, where films were concerned, was the trade magazine. Mm -hmm. So I really got deeply interested in pictures. Were films your first job? No, no. My first job was a technical engineering job, actually. I had studied engineering, mm. and I was in the uh, um, estimating department of a cable company. And um, eventually then I gravitated to the advertising department, where having taken a course of art at the University of London, I was able to... Uh, express myself there and through that I went into the designing of what were in those days of silent films the art title. Oh yes. Uh, they were rather naive affairs when I look back on them. You know the title would say uh, John was leading a very fast life and I would draw a candle with a flame of both ends underneath. You know? yes. And that brought and you from there into in script writing, writing scripts and then art direction and Mm -hmm. and eventually into direction. Yes. What was the first picture you directed? The very first picture I directed was called The Pleasure Garden. It was a melodrama, and it was made in Munich, Germany, and I had to uh, direct it in German. Mm -hmm. Was that difficult? Was your German pretty good? or did you have uh, to I would say it was bit? enough to order a good <laughs> meal, you know. Yes. But it was silent pictures, so that... Uh, one wasn't involved in the finer points of dialogue or mm. anything like that. Well, then a few years later, you directed the very first British sound film. That's Black right, Mayor. that was called Black Mayor, yes. Mm -hmm. You were to make quite a number of varied films before you settled down to, to specialise in suspense pictures. Which film was, was the turning point? Which one made you say, this is what I can do and, and what I want to do? Well, I really think that... Um, uh, the film The Lady Vanishes mm -hmm. pretty well set the pattern. Um, I, I would say this, I think it's more uh, since one's been in America that one's been what is called, quote, typed, unquote. There, uh, much more than in England, uh, standardization, as you well realize, is a very important part of the national life. Yes. When you went to work in Hollywood, did you find any major adjustment necessary, or films had always been very British in, in background and character? Uh, no, the, not, not at all, because, you see, the first film I ever made in America was an English film. It was called Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And I have made many English films since. The second film I made was called Foreign Correspondent. Yes. That was all laid in London and, and Holland. Um, no, the thing that I began to learn was the fact of uh, an audience is the same the world over, and not to make films for one audience, but to make them for a world audience. Yes. You work as a freelance, don't you? Yes, yes. So that you have complete freedom from interference to work just the way you want to, from uh, the first idea yes. right up to the finished film. Oh, yes, film. yes. Which has been your favourite film? Which has given um, you the most satisfaction? Well, um... I actually make many types of films. In other words, the adventure story or the psychological thriller. Um, I think my favorite is called um, Shadow of a Doubt because mm. this film combined many elements, the element of suspense, the element of the, of the 
local atmosphere of a small town and, and quite an amount of character and also the enjoyment of having worked with Thornton Wilder. Yes, I remember it well. The pattern of the film industry is changing very fast. Um, audiences, they say, are losing the cinema habit. There are fewer films. What do you think will be the, the future pattern? I think that um, audiences now, having become selective, uh, when the assembly line has gone, mm. uh, I think each film stands on its own merits. I think one has to tackle it in terms of making a film that will attract audiences for its special virtues, not just another movie. Yes. As you, as you say, uh, the habit has gone. The nearest I could compare it would be, say, the publishing of a new book or a play. Now, if it's successful, it has a good run. If it isn't successful, then it's gone, it's yes. by the way. To cut out this present rather ridiculous release system where every film, whether it's a masterpiece or, or a piece of tripe, always plays one week. Well, that's ridiculous, yes. as you know. I mean, uh, why shouldn't a film have its uh, run uh, if there are people who are willing to pay to see it over a period of weeks, mm -hmm. just as a stage play? Yes. You've moved into the television field as well, haven't you? Uh, a little sideline, yes. Of course, yes. that doesn't compare at all with the making of pictures mm -hmm. in any way. Well, you've told us about the last film you, you've been making. Are, are you planning another one? I'm planning a psychological film. It's called uh, Psycho. Mm. And uh, is in the nature, shall we say, of a rather gentle horror picture. <laughs> Splendid. And as usual, are you going to be in it yourself for just a, a brief appearance? Oh, I always make the brief appearance. But now, of course, uh, especially in America, one's uh, visage is so familiar now that I have to get into the picture and out as quickly as possible <laughs> so as not to spoil the story. You have a reputation in the studios for being a practical joker. Would you say that's justified? Um, not today. Uh, as a matter of fact, the practical jokes that I used to enjoy were always benevolent ones. They were never uh, burning the seat of another person's pants. <laughs> not that kind of thing. Uh, as a matter of fact... Um, I gave it up because they were rather too generous and they were expensive and costly, so I yes. don't do it anymore. <laughs>